So, welcome to the annual guest lecture series at Middlesex University. We, we run an annual uh, guest lecture series of weekly hour-long talks. These take place every Thursday evenings between 5 and 6 p.m. And the attendees are yourselves, uh, product design, product design engineering, so that's B-A-B-Eng, and design engineering consisting of the second and final year um, robotics, mechatronics, and electronics students. However, it is open to all at Middlesex University. So over the course of the year, you will have other um, students and staff from other courses attending as well. And these are a really valuable part of our academic timetabling. What we do over the course of the year is um, we bring together a really vibrant mix of speakers from the, the entire spectrum of design and engineering. So you have a mix of leading practitioners, opinion leaders, radical thinkers, and emerging talents and this will hopefully inspire and support your professional development, not only for yourselves, but for ourselves as well. It will get you guys to um, understand the diverse range of professions and routes in the industry, both for design and design engineering, both uh, classical design and the traditional engineering, but also anything in between as well. So, so over the last 10 years, We've been visited by many amazing people um, and we've started to put together a fantastic list of guest speakers for this coming academic year. And th hopefully there'll be around 18 plus minus um, guest lectures over the course of the year. So it'll run until Christmas, there'll be a little break and then it'll run again for in the new year and it'll finish uh, um, just before Easter. If you wanted to see some of the people that we invited over last year, um, feel free to look at the link that I've just posted in the chat and that's in the most recent MDXPD magazine and it covers um, engineers from Jagger Land Rover, Draxel Meyer, um, people who have started up their own companies. So you have the director and co-founder of maker spaces such as Building Blocks. We had the head designers and automation engineers from Dyson amongst many other professions. And we had, for example, uh, the, the young woman engineer of the year, um, who was a manufacturing engineer at Rolls-Royce who attended last year as well. And a fantastic range of speakers who will ho hopefully inspire you, allow you to start networking, building your interests and preparing you for placement if you wanted to attend placement in, in between your second and final year or um, employment post-graduation. So, Today, we're really happy to welcome Rabia Arif. The details have been sent through to your email addresses in terms of who the speakers are, and we'll do that on a weekly basis. Each week, the link will be different um, for the Zoom meeting because we are inviting external uh, speakers. And in terms of the security, et cetera, we'll be sending you guys a, a, a different link with a different meeting um, uh, Zoom link, a different uh, password, et cetera. On, on a weekly basis. So do keep a check on your emails and also have a, have a read through the, the brief biography that we sent through and the title of the talk prior to coming to the lecture. Rabia is a faculty employment advisor in our, in our faculty, in, the, in the, the Faculty of Science and Technology. And that covers uh, computer science, design, engineering, and mathematics. Um, she's studied BSc and MSc business information systems and management at Middlesex University. She's been working here now for over six years, um, both as uh, in roles of teaching alongside support and administration. And she's been helping uh, members of staff set up modules using online resources. She's worked um, on uh, educational technologies, projects for the NHS with mental health department as well. And over the last three years or so, she's uh, an employability advisor um, at MDX Works. And what this will do is it helps you guys uh, secure placements and internships. So if you guys have been on an internship previously, you would have been in contact with both Rabia and myself. But um, you guys, uh, MDX Works also offers, uh, obviously, career guidance, graduate opportunities, um, job applications, and also the process post-graduation uh, as well. And today, the topic of the talk will be placements and employment for product design and design engineering. And before we start, this is our first uh, guest lecture of the year and it's in a slightly different format because obviously we would have all been together in um, a lecture theatre on campus. Just a few general points of advice over the next 15-16 weeks or, or lectures we will be inviting 
you know, external speakers to come speak to, to, to all of you guys and inspire you guys and give you guys some really interesting information. There's an opportunity to listen to what they have to say. And also there's an opportunity to ask um, questions at the end as well, both verbally and through the text, which we'll moder moderate. Um, in terms of uh, just a general kind of house rules, etc., um, just a little bit of a common courtesy. Um, sign it. Sign in with your original names, right? With your registered uh, emails, etc. The, the records do show on our side in terms of who's attended, how long they've attended, the duration. And for many of you guys, um, obviously, this is a module that is a, that requires compulsory attendance and an assessment afterwards as well, an assessment output. So uh, obviously you guys need to attend on a weekly basis and show, um, yes. Yeah, so like, uh, let's avoid any inappropriate interactions, which obviously uh, is more easily facilitated online when you can sit behind the screen. Yeah. So let, let's hopefully avoid any of those. And yeah, you don't have to have your um, videos on for this particular call. And um, I think I've muted you guys all to begin with, but then you can obviously unmute yourselves uh, and I'll give you guys that um, option uh, when you guys, when it comes to the time for Q and A. Another great opportunity this year is that we're inviting speakers from all around the world, especially from Europe. Um, so we've already got a few lined up from like Finland, um, from Germany, et cetera. And it's, it kind of opens up the possibilities. Um, so we're making the most of the um, current situation so whilst there's a negative that we can't all be together in the same room, in the same lecture theatre, et cetera, um, there's also positives uh, in the current situation. And without taking up any more time, I will now stop sharing the screen and I will hand it over to Rabia, who will enlighten us with information on placements and employment post-graduation. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, Ahmed has already done my introduction quite well <laughs> uh, and given my you know, background information to you all. But my name is Rabia. I am the employability advisor for science and technology, mainly supporting two departments, which is computer science and design engineering mathematics. Um, I have a presentation to share with you all today. So we'll take it from there. Mainly it will be about um, an overview of our service, how we can support you over your second year right now and your final year and uh, life after graduation. And also, um, you know, more in details about placements, where to look, how to get started, and some placement paperwork process that needs to be done before you can actually go and commence your placements. So I'll just share my screen with you all now. Okay, so as I said, some of the things to cover today will be an introduction to MDX Works, uh, placements, internships, MDX, uh, some of the student experience from previous years who have taken a placement or let's say a summer internship, uh, how to get started, the placement paperwork process, and some of the next steps for yourself uh, to consider in your own time before you can make an appointment with me or speak to me um, on a phone call appointment. So just to go through MDX work, so we are the ma main centre employability service of Middlesex University. So that means we are the only actually service uh, in terms of employability for you guys. So all Middlesex University students have access to us. Um, we are here to support you preparing for uh, you know, a world of exciting opportunities when you graduate and while you are studying here. So that means anything to do with your career planning, your career kind of portfolios. For example, you may need help with your CVs, applications, interviews, uh, looking for part-time jobs as well, you know, work experience, volunteering opportunities, uh, job applications. So anything around your career planning, we are here to advise you and help you uh, build up your portfolios and your, your applications to be able to present yourself to the employers in a, in a very confident manner. Uh, we do have a bit of an issue where we do get students uh, struggle a bit with, the, you know, in terms of confidence when it comes to communicating with the employers. So that's one of the things we really want to, um, you know, get rid of that gap. We would like to prepare you for your career journey and to be able to speak to the employers with a lot of confidence and to be able to showcase your examples, evidences of your work that you have done. Doesn't necessarily only mean uh, work experiences, but also from your, your studies as well. So for example, um, over the three years of your studies, or let's say four years if you're undertaking a master's uh, course as well, all the, the projects that you work on and you know the work that you undertake is really it's really valuable. So many students miss that out on their CVs and applications, but we just want to make sure that you, we are here to support you to be able to put that out to the audience. 
So currently we are operating online only. I'm sure most of you must have seen our office before on campus. We are based in college building in CG07, so that's the main building uh, ground floor. Um, you can contact us face-to-face uh, -face once we are back on campus, but until then it's all online based. So our phone number is on the slide right now and the general email address is which is mdxworks at mdx.ac.uk. But as I said, it is all based online right now. So any of the drop-in hours that we do, it'll be all online. So I'll just go through that in the next slide. I know I've already given my introduction. So I'm the advisor for two departments, as mentioned before. I We do have uh, another uh, advisor for natural science psychology just to let you all know because she's uh, Emma is part of science and technology faculty as well so sometimes students do look to go into different area of the faculty so her details are also there on the on the on the slide right now my colleague Emma both of our email addresses are there the drop-ins were working before Monday to Friday 10 to 4 same thing will be happening online with the same rotor so myself and Emma luckily we both have same day which is uh, every Wednesday between 10 to 4 so our phone numbers are on the screen so if you would like just a quick chat you can just give us a call just please do note that this is open to all students um, on our campus so that means from other faculties as well so you uh, everyone have access to call us uh, during that time 10 to 4 it could be from business school from law uh, it's because it's just a quick chat for example 15 minutes like a drop in but if you would like to have a bit more detailed conversation about your applications or cvs or you know career planning then the, there is an appointment uh, you can uh, book with me through mdx works website so i'll go through a bit more of that in detail in the next few slides so what do we offer? And I've mentioned a few things already before. Uh, we offer tailored support from CVs to interviews, uh, you know, to your portfolios, applications, uh, work experience, placement support, graduate support as well. We have dedicated employability advisors for kind of each area. So we've got, for example, let's say two for business school, two for science and technology, two for ACI, and then we've got one for law as well. So you have a you know, different range to go to. We have one for health and education as well, sorry, I missed out. Um, sometimes students are looking to go, for example, if you're a final year student, you may want to go into teaching. So we do have advisor from the, the, you know, the teaching kind of side as well, who can give you some support. All advisors are more than happy to support students from different areas. So you're more than welcome to access that support as well. We do employer engagement network opportunities for our students. So for example, recently we hosted a careers uh, grad stock event. Don't know if many of you had the opportunity to attend that. It was advertised through our website, social media. I did send uh, an email directly to all students as well. Uh, so you should have received that, but we had very good. So normally we do it on campus, but this year it was all online based. So we had um, a week full of activities and sessions running from different employers. But as Ahmed said in the beginning as well, you know, you have, um, so you are lucky that you've got these guest lectures where employers are actually coming, you know, to speak to you online, but not many of the courses have that um, access. So, you know, that is something very valuable. Some of the tips that you learn from them, please do put them into practice. So we try doing the same where we bring employers uh, to you. Uh, at the moment, it will be all online. So, you know, giving you some access to, for example, useful tips, giving some insight into their, um, their business or organizations, what kind of roles are available, for example, internships or placements or graduate opportunities as well. And they give you some kind of application process insight as well. So I think these things are really useful, even if you're not applying to that specific company, but just, for example, attending and learning to, to be able to apply that knowledge onto another organization would be really useful for you all. So we do help students uh, to start up or grow their own business as well. If you would like to do that, my director, Alan Stewart, he's the, um, the contact for that, can give you directly myself, you know, in the, in the chat box later on, his email address, if you'd like to contact him. Some students do get to final year and they have, uh, you know, plans to start up their own kind of um, their business. So Alan is more than happy to provide that support. We have paid part-time opportunities through our Unitemps branch, which is also part of MDX work. So I'll go through that in my next slide now. So uni terms, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are aware already if you're a final year and second year student, is part of MDX Works at Careers and Employability Service. So it's our on-campus based recruitment service. So it's internal. Uh, it provides students with flexible and paid opportunities to work on campus. Currently, we don't have much going on campus, but there you have to visit unitemps.com to register yourself. You'll have to choose um, 
Middlesex University as the primary branch. If you need help with that, the the, the team from Unitemps, they're very uh, helpful and supportive. So there's contact details for them on these slides as well. I will share these slides with Ahmed to uh, send out to you guys or you know, post on my learning for you all so you can have access to all the information. Uh, but there are various roles uh, within Unitemps, uh, you know, the, the internal recruitment service, for example, student ambassador, course representative, student learning assistant. I'm sure you have some of them already in your lessons as well. So, you know, when you get to final year, you may have someone, uh, for example, if you're a second year, you get someone from your final year to come in and help you uh, from the same course. So those are all SLAs. Again, does go through Unitemps. So you don't get a job by just registering yourself. You'll have to register and then you have to browse each vacancy. Each one will have to be a different application. So, for example, they may ask you to upload a CV and a very short cover letter, let's say 500 words. So, um, again, that support we can give you again with the, the, the application review and, you know, your, your feedback on your CVs and applications. So do get in touch with us. This kind of support is available through, uh, you know, the drop in hours or you can just book with your, um, your advisor, which is obviously me. Um, Unitemps team is more than happy to help students who are international students as well, uh, looking to work during part time, uh, you know, work, uh, sorry, term time. So there is, a, I know uh, from my understanding, if you are an international student on a tier four visa, you have some restriction during your term time, so which is 20 hours, but during non term time, you can do more than 20 hours. But please be careful because at non-term time, you may think that you are not coming to campus or you're not, you know, you don't have a lesson, but you may be doing, for example, your project on the side. So that still counts as a term time. So um, again, Unitem's team is more than happy to support on that. Or for example, the, the ISAT team, which is International Student Advice Team. So we don't normally do direct our students to them as well because we get many uh, questions around the, the international student working uh, here within UK. So this is how the mdxworks.com looks like. Uh, you may have visited before in the previous years. So we changed over a year our, uh, our platform. This is exactly how it looks now when you go on there. If you haven't accessed this page before, you will need to sign up. So you, before you could lo log in with your username and password for university, now it's not the case. So I've got a short video to just play for you all. Hopefully you should play the sound as well. If not, there's not much going on in the sound. Uh, you can just see the, the captions that should be. It's a very short video. It's just to give you a, a very kind of over quick overview of how it looks uh, more than, you know, just going through because we probably don't have time today. But I will be coming uh, into your sessions later on in the weeks, uh, in your academic weeks. So, you know, to go through how to sign up to the this website and um, to get your portfolios ready on there. So you can have your career profile on our website too now. We have uh, many employers that we work very closely with who are assigned to um, the, the kind of employer side of things on our website. So they upload any, you know, jobs, they have their own profile there, they can see your profiles on there too. So that's a very good way to connect with employers, kind of like LinkedIn, but we will have a LinkedIn session later on as well in the year. So I'll go through a bit more about our website um, later on with you, but there's many resources on our website for you as well. For example, CVs, cover letter guides. So you may want to go through that before you can actually book an appointment with me to go through feedback of your documents. So these are just some of the employers that we work closely with. Uh, that's just a short list. There's many more. Um, this is the recent event that, that took place that I mentioned in the beginning. I know it's already gone now, but any um, uh, employer events that come through, um, I'll make sure they go to the, the academics, but as well as directly to you all as well. Hopefully you are all receiving my emails because I do try to send out opportunities. We have been told not to spam your inboxes, so we have to be a bit careful. Um, but I still try to uh, send out, uh, you know, kind of regular updates to you all. OK, so moving on, uh, I'll talk a bit more about placements and internships for you all now. So placement is really a, a period of work experience that forms as an integral part of your studies. So every course within our university, so every other university probably works a bit uh, differently, but our university has a, a placement or work experience. You can say module attached to each degree or well, most of them. 
So mainly for computer science department and design engineering mathematics department, which is your guys, uh, is a year long uh, industrial placement option. It doesn't necessarily have to be 12 months. It can be minimum of nine months as well. So minimum 36 week, uh, as, as long as you meet that requirement. It is a supervised industrial uh, placement. So what that means is, because it's uh, attached to a placement module. So you'll gain 120 credits at the end of this. So form as, uh, for example, a four year sandwich program. So you'll do your first year, second year, then you do a year long placement or nine months to 12 months, then you'll come back and do your final year. So this will form as a four year sandwich program. And at the end of your degree, you will have formally written on your degrees and industrial placement experience. So we highly recommend for you to go and undertake this. There's loads of uh, you know, uh, benefits of doing undertaking a placement. We have had students uh, going on a placement, even a summer internship and coming back with a totally different mindset. And you know, the skills that they gain, the way they are able to you know, speak to the employers in the future, the way they're able to network with different you know, colleagues as well, even the class, you know, student fellows uh, in, the, in the classes as well, it's very different. So the approach changes a bit when you go and undertake a professional experience. The only difference is between a year long and summer internship for you guys is that for a year long, you'll gain 120 credits and it'll form as a you know, part of your degree where a summer internship will not be written uh, on your degrees. So you will not have uh, credits attached to that. But just want to make that clear in the beginning, it's only beginning of the year. Uh, we normally do get students coming back after taking you know, three months internship and saying, um, can you put me on placement module? That cannot be done because the, the, you know, the one attached to you guys is a year long. Doesn't mean that we uh, look, uh, you know, we, that we underestimate a summer internship. Still, you get the same support from us from MDX Works. I'm still here to support you exactly the same way as we would do for a year long. Um, and the experience that you gain from there, the skills, uh, again, very beneficial. So you do have an option, you know, to take a year long or some internship. But just wanted to get that clear in the beginning for you all before, you know, you come to me later on and say, why didn't I get, you know, a year long uh, credits, whereas my, you know, someone else in my class did. Also just wanted to get clear that you can take with different companies as well, as long as it's relevant to your degree and it meets all the criteria, for example, minimum 36 weeks. So you may want to do, let's say, you know, let's say it's nine months, right? So 12 months, you may want to do three months in one company. And then let's say the remaining six months, uh, you know, in another company or seven months in, in a different company, we're more than happy to process that for you. But again, there's place and uh, paperwork process that needs to be undertaken before you can actually go and commence your placement. Um, I'll go through that a bit more in detail, but you should not commence your placement until we have approved that for you. So just a few of the facts are that 81% of the employers value employability skills over and above factors, you know, such as their subjects uh, and class of degree. So just, you know, instead of just having a, a degree in a specific area, skills are very important these days, you know, the professional experience is really important. Uh, employers want students to be prepared to be able to take practical work themselves in, you know, in the workplace. So those skills are really important for you to gain. Some of the, the list here, um, you know, to go through why undertake work experience, I'm sure you already know, uh, you know, just generally is to gain relevant skills and experience in the area that you like to pursue your career is in. But also sometimes uh, it's a good taste, a session for you. You know, you may go and work for, let's say, I don't know, a very big company, because we do get students coming to us and saying, you know, I just want to work for big companies, no small companies at all or medium size. But sometimes they realize when they go for very big companies, they don't really like the, the, you know, the atmosphere or the culture of those companies. I'm not saying all of them are like that, but everyone is different. So, you know, you, you may be someone who, who enjoys doing work, you know, working for that kind of company's culture, but you may be someone who totally enjoys totally opposite side of it, where, you know, you like more practical hands on approach, uh, you know, uh, coming up with your own kind of generating ideas where it's a small, you know, small group of people working together and you're able to communicate more effectively that way. So it all depends on you, but this will give you more exposure to what maybe, you know, what you like, what you don't like. So it gives you a, an open kind of mind to when it comes to applying for your graduate roles. It enhances your CV so that, you know, very, uh, very main one when, when it comes to submitting any applications. If your work experience or, you know, your key skills is looking very em empty to employers, it will not make a good impression, especially nowadays in the current climate. You, you know, you need to have a bit of an edge over other, other candidates on your applications. Talking points at interviews, no, no one's ever going to ask you, um, you know, did you do this? Did you do that? 
they would ask you to have examples and evidences ready. So case studies, you know, scenarios, you can only get that by, um, you know, having, ex uh, you know, experiences and skills gaining from um, other places. So for example, practical work experience or your degree. I know you guys are quite lucky to have a lot of practical work involved in your, you know, your area of degree. So that's very good um, to have on your applications. It improves your time management skills, meeting new people, you know, sometimes even doing volunteering means giving back to the local community. Again, I know I keep saying this increases your confidence, uh, you know, putting th theories into practice, learning new skills, uh, being able to work as part of a team. Some of my slides uh, in the next few slides will show that the, you know, the key skills I've put together, some of the soft skills and technical skills that are required for your area, um, you know, of um, expertise. Um, but before we go on to that slide, um, for work experience, it's really important to gain experience to build your uh, portfolios. I know you guys work on, you know, big portfolios, so it'll be really useful to kind of have, uh, you know, evidences ready for that. Establish useful network of contacts. So once you start, let's say you go for a place internship, that employer may want to keep you on board once you graduate. You have to remember you only come back to study for about six months or so, you know, so you only got 24 teaching weeks and again you're, you know, you'll be able, you'll be looking for a graduate role so employers are ready to wait for you, you know, sometimes. Making connections with an industrial design in your area, uh, your area and asking, you know, if you can complete a placement with them. That's really important step and I will go through again in the next few slides, but many of the the, the students do find opportunities by being very proactive. So, you know, they're contacting employees themselves and a very small area of interest or passion that you have, you know, for what you're studying right now, a specific area, you may want to contact relevant people in that area through LinkedIn. It could be, you know, just making a, a list of employers within your local areas for that, that specific area of interest and contacting them yourself. There's no harm in that. You may get a rejection, but again, it's worth trying because many students do find, uh, you know, experiences that way. And it's really useful USB for your applications during current climate, like I said before, many of the employers will say, um, you know, during, let's say COVID-19 period, what have you done in your spare time? So for example, if even if you're not going, you know, you don't want to do a year long placement and you just want to go straight to your degree, summer internship is a good, um, you know, um, idea to take on because it doesn't, uh, you know, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't really clash with your studies. Or for example, even if you don't want to do that, any kind of part-time opportunities, projects going on, even with the you know design engineering mathematics department, anything that's taking place, you know, academics working on a project, or there's any events going on, running online, maybe you know, going forward now. I know previously we had many active um, you know events from this department, so you guys are quite again very uh, you know lucky to have that um, you know with, for you guys. Mm. So all of those would be really, really um, useful for you to be involved in, to network with different people. Uh, you know, th those are quite good talking points. And when an employer does ask you, you know, what did you do in your spare time? Those are the talking points that you can give away. Even signing up to online courses. Uh, you know, there's many uh, websites right now online that provides free courses for you guys to do online in your spare time. If you feel like there's something you are studying as part of a module, but it's maybe not as detailed, uh, you, you know, you'd like to explore that a bit more in your own time so it's it'll be i think very great for you to start looking into those kind of free online courses again that putting those kind of extracurricular activities on your cvs applications uh, is really attractive to employers you always need to think that currently you need to stand up to the employers that's the main thing there is still recruitment going online you know especially for the technology kind of in industry there's many uh, employers still taking students on board for placements and graduate roles but what do you, what can you offer that maybe another candidate cannot? So that I think that that question should always be in the back of your minds. Okay, so this is the slide that I was talking about, um, you know, some of the requirements and skills for placements. So many of the employers, um, they do normally put down on, on applications that we don't expect previous experience if you're applying for, you know, graduate roles or placements and internships, but they will, um, you know, you need to be working towards a STEM degree or relevant degree of the area. Uh, however, again, the challenge is that employers do receive high volume applica of applications, especially now going forward, it, it is quite competitive more than even before. So how can you stand out from the crowd is, you know, your question to yourself over the next two years or let's say one year of your studies, your final years. So below are some of the soft and technical skills I've highlighted that employers are typ typically looking for in your area. Some of the soft skills that they look for are presentation, communication, ability to work to deadlines, 
uh, commercial awareness of the you know the area or just generally the news and trends going on in a technology kind of area ability to use your own initiative and work independently as well as working as part of a team again all of these when you do your cover letters um, you can't just write down i have presentation skills i have you know i'm, I'm able to work uh, you know to my deadlines okay how is always the question how are you able to do that and that's where your examples will kick in so some of the technical skills are, for example, subject specific technical knowledge and expertise, um, computer literacy, including three dimensional, um, you know, um, conceptual and CAD knowledge. Sorry, it's just moved. Creative ability and hands on approach for your guys area, knowledge of industrial processes, techniques and, you know, standards, so operating kind of standards that take place. So these are the things if you haven't looked into before. Now is your, you know, don't limit yourself again to just these skills. Looking at various job applications that you're interested in is really useful for you. Just to point out the requirements from employer side, what they're looking for. So you're able to tailor your applications accordingly. So the key to success is uh, prepare uh, thoroughly. So in time, very good time, you need to arrange your experience. If you are a second year student, now is the time to start engaging with me. Many of the employers, uh, you know, deadlines, could be various, so it could vary over the year. Some may close very soon. Some have already actually closed in September, uh, surprisingly. Some may be closing end of this year. Some may be doing January. You know, some may be open all year round. So it's all different for different areas. If you are really, really, you know, you've always had in your mind that I've always wanted to gain experience with a specific company, let's say, for example, you know, Rolls Royce or a, a very big company like PwC or, the, you know, other names, then you need to make sure that you already have in your mind prepared when your deadlines are, make a list of them and try to, you know, engage with me in a one-to-one -one appointment so we can make sure that you are meeting those deadlines. Just want to point out, do you think about small to medium-sized companies as well as large companies? I know I have said that before, but students do override that fact that, um, you know, small to medium-sized also have quite good opportunities. Maybe not as many, but they do get, you know, they would like to take on an intern, you know, someone to just come and help. And that's where, you know, you can be the person that can be the asset for them to, uh, you know, to, to work with. Okay, so next two slides I think I have uh, is from a uh, student experience. So um, these are the students who have undertaken a placement or let's say summer internship before. They're not with us today. I know one of them, uh, we're not able to talk about the employer, um, but there's one here. So one of the students, she, uh, she, took under, uh, she undertook a year long placement with We Make Stuff Happen. So I did host a, a session with this company recently over, I think it was end of August or September, not sure if any of you attended, but that was really useful. It, it is recorded. It is available on our MDX Works YouTube channel as well. So, you know, you, you have access to go and visit that again. There's very useful, good tips coming from, uh, you know, the, the, the owners of this company, just giving very good insight into when the, how the application works, how you should be really contacting. I'm not going to bore you by reading each and every point of this slide, but I sent some um, interview kind of, you know, you can say questions to my students. Um, to ask them, you know, how was their uh, experience? How did they discover that placement? Both of them, believe it or not, surprisingly, was actually not by just doing an online search. It was directly contacting organizations. For example, this one, we make stuff happen. The student contacted the organization directly herself. Uh, she discovered their website for more information, just to, you know, gather a bit more history and kind of like background information. If you are going to speak to any employers, it's good to have that background information with you. If you don't have that, you may come across as someone, you know, who, who doesn't know much about the area. And so you don't have that much enthusiasm and passion for that company to work with them. So having good knowledge about them makes them think, you know, you really want to work for them. You have kind of, you know, gathered some uh, their cultural kind of, you know, knowledge and information. So you'll be a good fit to work with them. Uh, the experience, uh, you can see the quote, is extremely positive. She learned a lot, uh, you know, reality of applying skills um, into professional context and, you know, gained greater confidence in her design ability and personal skills. So I will, again, share these slides with you for you to have access later on. And there is, you know, some of the things that the, the intern mentioned that she covered during her, her placement year. Uh, I will go through the advice for current second year students um, is to go out and network. So, you know, for example, things like Eventbrite, you know, there's other things taking place like LinkedIn, you know, there's many things posted there. Our own events page, you know, on MDX Works is really useful. We do post different events taking place. If you are not currently, uh, you know, um, connecting with us through our social media, for example, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Twitter, 
now is the time, you know, to, to connect with us through them. I know on Instagram, we, we are actively posting any events that are taking place in the year, uh, sorry, in the week. So, um, you know, that would be a good for you, chance for you to connect with us and uh, be up to date with all the information. Any design kind of festival that takes place, a student attending them to, you know, gain a bit more exposure to different companies, uh, gain some great advice and portfolio meeting people to put name out there, you know, which wouldn't have happened otherwise. Now, the second one is a summer internship. So not um, uh, the company hasn't really allowed to mention the, the name of the, the, the company officially to the audience. However, this student mentioned to me that, you know, they had passion for scooter and electric conversions of old scooters. So what he did was he went to, a, you know, a very local place of where they were selling scooters and just spoke to the, the employer, the organization there, you know, the, the owner of the company and just said, you know, are you, uh, able to take on someone just to help you on a project I have some ideas to present in my portfolio make sure your portfolios are ready if you are going to do that talk with an employer because that's the next thing they will say you know I, do you have something to show us do you have your applicant you know your CVs but more than CVs I know in the kind of product design area is um, you know that the, the portfolios are quite an essential piece of work Again, the, it was really good experience and gave students the real working environment and it was a new experience for them so open you know more doors. These were some of the things covered, so the main responsibilities. Again, you can read that in your own time. Was it beneficial? A big yes. Uh, it gives a real insight into what the real world of work looks like. I think both the candidates said the same thing, the students, from the experiences. You know, it gives you a chance to get to another industry and make a decision on it if that line is really for you. That was something I said in the beginning, so I really want you to focus on that. Uh, advice for you guys for the, the second years final year students can take on board the same advice to be honest if you haven't been you know doing any kind of networking you haven't been looking into you know doing your career planning at all same thing will apply it's just that you're not looking for placements and uh, you know internships you're just looking out for graduate schemes and junior kind of level positions but using the same kind of advice you know that i'm giving in my slides right now look early and don't give up Search places that you might not think of first and be open to opportunities. That's exactly what I've been trying to say as well. Work to your strengths and be proud of your passion. So something, again, that you're really, really interested in, you know, speaking to your academics will also help you. Sometimes they can point out to you different directions as well as myself. So do talk out to people, you know, in, in your classes, in your, you know, if you're second year students, speak to final year students and just find out a bit more information, you know, how to maybe connect with different people, how they gained experience, did they do any, you know, project work, what, what kind of work did they undertake, I think that kind of exposure will be really good for you guys. So how to get started, these are some of the just very simple steps, I do want to point out in the beginning I said, you know, your, your placement needs to be relative to your course, it needs to be relevant, so as, as your summer internship as well, although we don't have to do placement paperwork for summer internship, but uh, for year long, we do. So it's really essential that before you start your research, you make sure that you, you know, you, you liaise with me, myself from MDX Works team. Um, you liaise with your module leader. So Ahmed is more than happy for you guys to speak to him if you have found an opportunity, you know, just to go through the job description, the company that you, you, you are planning to go for, just from an academic perspective to tell you, is that really going to meet objectives of what you are learning? Because sometimes there can be a very thin line, you know, between uh, what you are studying and what you really want to go out and do. So we are here to support you, but make sure you are talking to us. There is an MDX Works guidance document available on our website, which is mdxworks.com. If you go on there under resources, uh, you know, there's CV guides, cover letters as well, but there's also under resources, a science and technology section. That's where you'll find a, a guide document. We don't have just for placements. We have one for graduate schemes as well. Proactive approach, as I said before, you know, both of the, the, the experiences I've put down in these slides have been found by contacting organizations themselves. They were not through just online searching, especially now, how things are moving forward. Many things will be advertised, you know, through uh, very, you know, for example, some of the ones that we really mentioned to our students, Brad Cracker, um, you know, we work very closely with them as well. We always have uh, Jessica from the company who's, who comes and does, you know, sessions for our students just to go through. It's not just a search engine. There's many things you can do there. You know, you can build your profiles there. Again, there is a recorded session from the, the event that just took place recently in the Gladstock. And you can uh, you know access that in the coming weeks we haven't uploaded them just yet but you should have access to them very soon to go through those recorded sessions uh, you know just to build up on your profiles and how to start looking uh, using that search engine so this is how uh, the guide looks like with some of the search uh, engine uh, you know links for you guys 
in this slide, it's just the screenshot. You, you will not be able to click on this a picture, but from the actual guide document, this, those links are hyperlinked. So you'll be able to, um, you know, go to those, those websites. So process, so you can go on our website again, to sign up for an expression interest form which is again available on mdxworks.com. What that really means is that if you have expressed to do a placement, that means you are giving consent to receive regular updates from us. You receive like a newsletter, you receive an initial kind of you know email that sets out some of the things that I've mentioned this uh, slides already and my presentation today, but also you know the, the guide document attached again and how to get started, how to book an appointment with me. And then once that name is there on our Excel sheet, you know, every time a student registers themselves, that means those are the students, my work case load that I work closely with, and I'll try to send those students more opportunities than maybe others, although I do send to everyone, I don't want to miss out on anyone at all. Um, but this really means that you are, you know, informing us that you don't mind taking those emails from us, again, as we can't really, you know, send too many emails to you. Um, so there is no specific deadline for you but as i mentioned before in terms of companies some are open all year round some may be closing soon so make sure you have your eyes out you know you're keeping uh, your mind prepared for some of the the companies that you're really interested to work for for us as long as it doesn't uh, interfere with your next academic year we're all good to go you know before kind of october beginning of october september is fine as well i know many students do undertake place in red loop you know, which is part of Middlesex. So that's, again, very good experience for you all. Um, we get long lists of students doing placements there. Um, and, you know, we process pla placement paperwork very quickly. Uh, you're lucky again, and I keep mentioning, but um, Ahmed is a, a point of contact because the module leader for the, you know, the placement module for you all to, uh, you know, process any placement paperwork from the academic side. So these are the relevant opportunities open right now. This is just a very short list. There's many things open right now, but this is just to give you an idea before you can actually start your own research. So when I was mentioning about your module leader involved and myself, what we need to do is for once you have secured a, a placement, make sure you inform me and uh, Ahmed as well. Students will need to access the pre-placement, sorry, it's, I know it says computer science should have been changed to um, design engineering mathematics uh, module, which is assigned to every student of Middlesex University uh, on every campus, uh, you know, not just even Hendon. Um, this is because you want all you or all of you to have access to that module. We don't want to limit just those that you know are going to take a placement. This is not really a this is not a placement module. This is a pre-placement. So it just allows you to do your placement paperwork process. So under this module, you'll be able to uh, um, get um, sorry get access to the Google form. So this is the form that you fill out and then you submit and then we have all the details there that you will need to upload a signed contract and job description. This needs to be signed by yourself and the employer. And also you'll need to upload employer liability and public liability certificates. Please don't be scared that it looks like a big list of things that you need to upload. Google form is very straightforward. It's details about yourself, the course you are studying, who's going to be your supervisor at the organization, the main organization details, a short description of you know, the kind of work you'll be undertaking with them and your title when you're working for them and their contact details, et cetera. Contract job description is really essential, especially if you're doing year long, for us to see what company you're going to be working for. And, you know, it's an official kind of legal document just to make sure that whatever that you have signed up to do is exactly what you'll be doing later on, because there will be, uh, you know, contact points while you are undertaking your placement from um, an academic perspective to contact you, for example, in the beginning of your uh, placement, which is October normally, and then one in Feb and March. So these are the two points to make sure that, you know, you are doing what you are supposed to be doing. We don't want our students to go and you know, work for organizations and doing totally opposite to what they have been told to do in the beginning and vice versa that, you know, that you are also giving um, your, you know, uh, your best uh, ability to the, the organization as well. And, you know, they don't have any complaints from their side. Liability certificate is both employer liability, public liability, all companies within UK have that in place. So please don't be scared when it's just a request that you need to do. You need to ask the employer to send you that. They should be able to send you a copy of this. If you're planning to undertake your placement outside of UK, for example, Europe or somewhere else, they don't have that in place. But just let us know. And sometimes we can cover you, uh, you know, under our, um, our employer liability as well. So our insurance. But just make sure you are, you know, communicating with us. Otherwise, we wouldn't know. 
if you are tier four students, so either way, you should not commence your placement if you're doing a year long and you would like to be registered for the, the placement module. But if you are planning to do a tier four, uh, if you are a tier four, sorry, student uh, and you're planning to do a placement, please make sure that you do not commence your placement until you have informed me and done all the place and paperwork, which was on the previous slide, because this means we will have to inform the student visa compliance team at least two weeks in advance. So this is for them to update the Home Office that during this year long period or whatever period that has been agreed with the employer, let's say nine months, you know, um, or let's say 10 or 11 months, 12 months, during that period, you are able to do full time work, but only once we have approved that and it's relevant to your degree. So for tier fours, you, your uh, start date needs to be two weeks in advance. So let's say, you know, if you're putting an application for today, it needs to be two weeks in advance of today when your start date would be. This is the period for, uh, you know, visa compliance team and home office to communicate with each other and update your records. Because you can sometimes, uh, you know, get a, a random visit. You can get a call from, uh, you know, because you are under regulation. So you need to, uh, you know, make sure that you follow all the regulations. So again, these are the next steps I have mentioned before. I think before making an appointment with me, it would be really uh, great if you can create your CV like a draft version. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you have one already, uh, you know, send that to MDX Works uh, inbox or you can send it to myself. I will have my slide at the end again, or you can just make a one-to-one -one appointment with me using my, um, you know, mdxworks.com, our website under there, there's an appointment section. Um, and more than happy to set a Zoom call or, you know, um, a phone consultation for you all. So from all of that, um, I may have missed out a few things, but again, like I said, I will be coming to your sessions in the year uh, to do more of a one-to-one -one kind of interactive session where we'll have activities based as well. But are there any questions at all? I'm going to come out. Awesome. Uh, thanks, oh. thanks, Rabia. That was brilliant. Um, I'm just going to spin through first and foremost some of the questions that were put into the chat. Yeah, sorry, um, I couldn't see them while I was seeing my presentation. You and uh, feel free to answer those. And then you can open up to the floor and uh, you guys can write some more questions in the chat if you guys want to, or you can put your hands up. So if you go to the more icon, I'm um, right at the bottom, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can turn your video on or audio on and speak as such, right? Um, so Diego Gonzalez, he was asking, uh, do you give help in terms of finding a place to gain work experience? Yeah, so... Um uh, just just uh, using, you know, from the slides, I, I did, uh, maybe I forgot to just say that we are here to support you, direct you to different companies, you know, any employers that we work closely with in the year as well. For example, you know, the guest lectures that you'll be having, even those companies, they may have opportunities. You know, so th this is the kind of background work that we do. We are trying to get more and more network with our employers too. But again, it is students, uh, you know, responsibility as much as ours to be uh, putting in applications or looking actively. For example, you may have, you know, one appointment with me over a month I don't know you may not have after that time so I don't want you to just sit there wait on me to find placements for you I'll guide you I'll direct you to the places any opportunities that come my way I send it directly to the students as well but more than this you'll be also you know actively required to be part of this process and look for uh, opportunities as yourself we want you to be ready when you graduate you know to be able to search for these opportunities or, or be actively looking for example you know using just other than traditional methods, you know, for example, in the slides I mentioned, those two students that went on, they, they, you know, they, they gain by actually speaking with employees directly themselves. So yes, I'm here to help, but you are also, you know, 50% required to, to work along with me in the process. Oh, brilliant. And then uh, there was a bit of conversation between the guys. So they were all having a... Uh, I think there was one about free uh, website courses that you can do online. I have a list of them. I don't know on top of my head right now, but I, I do have a few, a few of the ones right on the side. If you email me, uh, I can send you those, or I can send it to Ahmed with the email when, when I send the attachment of these slides. So th there yeah. are there are many right now that are, you know, that are actually doing uh, free online courses. You do get a certificate as well. Even LinkedIn Learning, I know you'll have a session based on this very soon, mm -hmm. but LinkedIn Learning does give you, you know, some of the, the things that you can undertake, like a short course, you know, and it gives you a, 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 and kind of like a digital certificate, I believe, and you can have that posted on your profiles too. So that's a very good kind of attraction for an employer. So, you know, keep an eye on that too. So, so some some input there from the from the audience. So Kailash said mentioned LinkedIn Learning, and then um, his yeah, I just saw that now. <laughs> and Udemy, um, and uh, Kailash, uh, yeah, also uh, said that so you have to pay for some of the certificate certificates. Elena mentioned EDX. So no, thanks for all the suggestions. Yeah. And one of the one of the comments there were, do you guys have free time for on, other online courses? 
and I'm also called uh, yeah, you guys should should have uh, some time during the summer and you know, um, to upskill and obviously uh, polish off your CVs and your skill sets. Now, um, Joseph and Nav, Nav and Tiana, they also um, they're asking the, the question along the same line. So once they graduate, what's the process of you guys helping them find a job? Can they still access your help after graduation? Okay, so we've got uh, one of our colleagues, Wendy, she, she's kind of entirely based online. I know we all are now based online, but she was already doing a, a lot of online kind of work, you know, in the background. So up to kind of six months, we provide that support where, you know, you, it's, it's kind of like a lifetime support. We are here to support you. If you, you know, we get students coming even that have graduated 10 years ago, but it will be a bit of a basic support. But up to six months after your graduation, or let's say a year or two, you know, maximum two years, is uh, we are more than happy to give kind of same support. So, you know, same application support, as I mentioned before, with your CV, applications your you know your job interviews assessments we can still set up the same kind of it's exactly the same process set up same uh, you know one-to-one -one kind of appointments uh, with you all and you know we can take it on from there whatever support that you need awesome and uh Aurel Marianne has asked uh, a few questions so I'll, I'll start with the first one um is placement considered as part of the academic year um are they asked for a loan or is placement uh, is is the academic year paused for the duration of the placement Okay, yeah, I should have uh, put that in my in my slides. That's one thing I have missed out. I know students ask that question a lot. So the placement is considered as part of your, uh, you know, your 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 course because it will be sandwich program. While you are undertaking your placement, you don't pay fees. So the whole uh, paper, the paperwork process, if you're going to do a year long, which is going to form as part of your studies, is the reason for us to be able to make sure that we get you registered on the, the placement module, which is the PDE 3250. Once you are registered for that module, automatically uh, your uh, fee for that uh, year is waived. So what that means is that you don't pay a fee for that, that, that year of your studies. Then you come back in your final year, that's the year you'll be paying. And most of the opportunities that are year long are paid so it's a bonus on top. So you'll be earning more than paying, if that makes sense. So uh, Aurel also asked a question. So they're, they're at the beginning of the second year, right? And they yeah. might not know the, the skills and the exact knowledge that they could offer potential uh, employers, right? If they had a placement next year, but they, if they need to apply now and, the, and they have the hypothetical question, like what can you offer or what do you offer to those employers? Then what would they, how would they go about approaching that? So these are second year students you said, right? Um, there's, a, there's a combination of second year and final year students. Yeah, so if you're in the beginning of your second year uh, right now, and you know, you're going to do your applications. So we have been trying to do, you know, sessions from year one onwards. I know I've definitely done for design engineering. I don't know if I have been able to for product design. So you should remember me from last year. Um, there are other things that you can mention. For example, you know, part-time work. I had that uni temp slide for a reason that, you know, that's one of the most easy access for you to gain. You, you may think it's not relevant to your degree, but employers are not only looking for you to have experience, you know, uh, professional experience in your degrees. They know you are coming out to gain that experience, but they're looking for other things, you know, the people skills. How are you able to, you know, communicate really well? Are you able to manage your time well? Are you able to present yourself well? All those skills can come from your other experiences or for example, part-time jobs that you've done. You know, your, your key skill section when you have from year one till now of your, you know, when week three now, whatever that you have studied, some of the technical skills, you you should be able to point that out in your key skill section i'm pretty sure you must have covered something from your modules so that should really go on there you know from uh, you know from different modules that you have been studying so students do get confused they, they we get this question a lot again with the applicant you know cvs they come to us with this uh, key skills with very very soft skills only key skills you need to mention some technical and some soft skills work experience if you don't have relevant experience at this point you are going to go and gain that but again this is where these things will come in point for example if you were to go enroll yourself on a free online course right now those are the things that you can mention in your, you know, your extracurricular activities or in your even key skill section. For example, if you were to take that online course starting from, you know, tomorrow or Monday, if you were to do it for a few weeks and, you know, you're putting in applications by end of this year, because it's an ongoing process. It's not going to only just start now and going to end in, in a week time. It's an online going process. So by January, let's say December, the ones that are on, you know, ongoing year round, you would have gained experiences by then to, to have enough. But again, do get in touch with me and I can help you tailor your CV accordingly and, you know, make sure that you are able to put those evidences out that you have gained so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, Javier was asking for your email um, and uh, your email uh, has been sent out. So if you refer oh, you to already. Okay. So it's been circulated um, with the email and the details of the talk and the speaker. So if you refer back to the email right at the bottom, you'll see the contact details um, for, and that will have Rabia's email alongside uh, the MDX Works um, 
email are there as well. Yeah, I've just posted yeah. that just in case in the in the group chat. Also in the chat at the bottom as well. Thanks, Rabia. Yeah. And then, um, or else asking, uh, do they connect to employers through you, or do they talk to employers and then after connecting, then uh, kind of uh, mediate through you as well? So yeah, so if you're going to speak to any employer in your own time, you don't need to come through us. You know, we don't need to uh, kind of be like, you know, you can talk to this employer, not talk to this employer, etc. The only time you really need to, uh, for example, if you're doing, you know, background kind of homework in your own time, so you've got some of my, you know, useful tips from me, some guidance, and then, you know, we do expect you to go in your own time and be doing this process as well. But if you are struggling at any point, we are here to support you. But again, as I said before, that you, you are the candidate looking, so we want you to be as much involved as we are with you. Um, so during the process, when you are talking to employees, you don't need to come to us. But when you have found something or you think you, you know, you, it's along the lines of the, the application process going towards where you'll be able to secure, I think it'll be good to kind of just, you know, highlight to myself or maybe, uh, you know, even Ahmed as well, just to make sure that this is the area that you are looking in to avoid any disappointments later if we, you know, turned around and said, you know, this employer is not uh, able to provide this or let's say that, you know, you, it's not relevant to your degree. So I, that's the only thing. I don't want you to do a lot of hard work and then realise, you know, it's not something I can go and do now. Awesome. And then uh, I'll probably take uh, one or two more questions. Um, where would they access, uh, a question is, where would they access the Google Forms, the signed contracts, all of that kind of stuff? Uh, and where would they access this presentation? Okay, so this presentation I'll send to you. I, I'm not sure if, if you have uh, my learning space for this module. Uh, you know, uh, for this series of lectures, maybe you can uh, post it there or you can circulate with the, the, the year groups, year twos and year threes. Um, also with the, the, in terms of the, the paperwork. So it's the pre-placement module, design, engineering, mathematics. Every student is assigned to that, uh, you know, of Middlesex University, whether you are doing a placement or not, it doesn't matter. You all have been enrolled on that placement. So that's, you know, for example, if you want to take a year long placement, that's where you will find the Google form. You'll find my details again there you'll find, uh, you know, the next steps written there for you as well on how to, um, how to find, um, sorry, how to upload all the, the paper, necessary paperwork. There's like a submission box, how you upload your assignments using my learning. That's how you'll be uploading your contracts and job descriptions and the employer liability and public liability certificates. Awesome. And then um, if they were interested in doing the sandwich placement here, right? And then they changed their mind because for example, they started working or doing some, uh, some other activity. And then what happens? So if someone was to start, uh, you know, if they only did, let's say, a few weeks experience and just left straight away, um, that's something we need to speak to the the, the progression kind of team, uh, you know, uh, and the sometimes work closely with, let's say, academics, you know, I would come to yourself or even, you know, Kate or uh, let's say Mehmet, who's the head of department, just to get a decision. They've only missed three weeks of learning. Can they still come back and not take this like a gap year? Sometimes when students have done, let's say, five months, uh, you know, or six months, they have undertaken enough experience to, 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 you know, decide that this is equivalent to a year long experience. It all depends what they have undertaken, you know, a year, you know, in their responsibilities in the, in the job that they actually did. Um, so it all depends if you have done three months only, let's say, and you've missed, you know, good, good of your studies kind of time as well. And then you are, you know, you're not able to, um, Kind of come back as well it may count as a gap year and during that time you know we would advise you to carry on looking for other opportunities so we can uh, you know uh, we can connect your placement experience together because I, I did say you can do it in different companies it doesn't have to be just one company awesome no, thanks thanks a lot rabia that was uh, that was great that was, that was brilliant and if there's Matthew any was, more questions, you can send it to me directly, guys. Exactly. And I'm happy directly. And then, you, um, and in terms of the access to the recording, um, that will be sent through as well by email to you guys. Not all uh, lecture, lectures will be recorded because obviously there's NDA uh, agreements in place with certain uh, lecturers, and some work is confidential. But they will will circulate that to you as and when it's feasible. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'm um, look forward to seeing you guys again same time next week. Keep an eye on your emails in terms of the Zoom links and the details for the speaker and the talk. Cheers. Thank you. See you all. Bye.